Come on, anybody, come to bless them this morning. Hallelujah. We love you, God. Yeah. Yes, God. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. Yes, God. And it's your prayer in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out
Wow, we're so blessed to have you with us today. This is just really phenomenal to know that uh, we can talk to you and you can really talk back to us as you text your message along with us as we enter into the Word of God. So I just want to welcome all of you to, all to our online uh, worship service. And do me a favor, please make sure that you download our Winning Church app to follow along with the, uh, the sermon notes. Also, please sign in on the app to show that you are present to win a free gas card. I need you to just text the keyword "win give" to this number seven seven nine seven seven. I say it again seven seven nine seven seven. So you may want to give your tithes and offerings, and if so, uh, you can use the app or you can go to our website, uh, winning.church to give. And if you have any questions, I just need you to, uh, during the message, I need you to type in uh, the comments, the message, your message in the comments, either the leadership team or myself uh, will answer any questions that you may have. And please, by all means, share and invite your family, and your friends uh, to join us this Sunday morning and every Sunday morning at eight o'clock. And if you, if you like me, you say, hey, I didn't get enough. I want to get some more. Well, you can come with be with us uh, in person at 10 o'clock a.m. every Sunday morning. So this morning we're entering into a new series for the month of November. Now, our series is having to do with reset because 2021 is the year of reset. So we're going to reset for a new direction. Would you type that in uh, in the message, uh, in, in your comments? Your message in the comments says, reset for a new direction. That's our new series. So type uh, that in the comments, okay? All right, so uh, let's get started. Philippians 3 is where we're going to go. Philippians 3, uh, 12 through 14. And let me just begin with this. It is called life tough questions to ponder. And these are some of the things we probably just, you know, we really don't think about them, but we use them all the time. Why is it that the third hand on a watch is called second hand? You ever thought about that? And, uh, you know, and if a word, you know, really is misspelled in the dictionary, who would know it? We wouldn't know it. And why do we say that something is out of whack? What is a whack? And why does slow down and slow up mean the same thing? And, and what does fat chance and slim chance mean? The same? Why, does, why does it mean the same thing? And why do we say, take me to the ball game when we already did? <laughs> so these are some of the things we need to punt. And why do they say, why do, why do they call it stands when they built it for people to sit down? I don't understand it, but maybe you can uh, explain that to me uh, in the comments. All right. And uh, why is it called after dark when it really should be called after light? Don't, do you, do you agree? And, 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 and doesn't expecting the unexpected, <laughs> makes the unexpected expected. And here's one for you. Why are why why are a wise guy and a, a wise well, excuse me, a wise man and a wise guy opposite? Why is that not opposite? Wise man, wise guy. It, it means two different things, but you're talking about man, you're talking about a guy. But it means opposite. And why is phonics not spelled the way it sounds? These are things that, you know, we we ponder over, but, you know, sometimes we just don't really research or try to get into it. But let me add a, another question that has bothered me over uh, the years. Why do believers uh, let the past interfere with experiencing the will of God in the present? And specifically, why do we let the past or our past sins and failures block us from God's best? 
You know, Scripture says that we have all sinned, not y'all, but we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so we know that. Why do we allow what we have been through to really control where we're going? We should not allow that because we already know that we are not perfect beings. We're imperfect. The only one that's perfect is God. We're striving for perfection. In other words, we're, we're striving to mature, but we haven't gotten there like we really should. So knowing that we are created beings by God and God made us and we have, you know, now because of what Adam and Eve did, we have that sin nature. So there has been a war going on, a spiritual war, spiritual warfare going on since the beginning of time. But you know what? We can and we will win this war. Why? Because Jesus has already won. We have the victory. Amen. So most of us know how valuable and how vital, vital the word of God is uh, in the life of a believer. And so this morning, I want to take it a step further by showing you how practical the scriptures are as they address the needs and the questions of our lives. Specifically, the question that I just posed, I want you to just turn along with me uh, in Philippians, the third chapter, verse 12, familiar passage that I want us to read together as, you know, uh, the truth that we will consider this morning. Are you there? Uh, chapter three, verse 12. All right. You can just read on silently as I read it. It says, not as though I have already obtained, neither were already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which I also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are what? Behind and reaching toward forth unto those things which are where? Before me, Right? I press, that's what the scripture says, I press, I press, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, most of all the doers of his holy word. So I have noticed over the years that when it comes to past sins and failures, that we tend to ignore them or wallow in them. Have you ever noticed that? We tend to try to ignore them or wallow in our past sins, our past failures. That's not what God wants us to do. Now is the time for a reset for a new direction. We're not going to, no, we're not lo, no longer going to uh, ignore or wallow in our sins. We're not going to do that. Amen. So when people tell you, you know, you really messed up, and you know you have. The key question is whether or not you believe what you have just heard uh, and rather than ignore your past sins and failures. Here it is. You confess them to the only one who can forgive them. And who's that only one that can forgive them? That is Jesus the Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Right. And so first John one and nine. First John one and nine. It says if we confess our sins, I like this scripture. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Isn't that wonderful? So look at the text. Paul simply says, past sins and failures, forget them. I need you to, <laughs> I need you to text that uh, right there in the comments. Past sins and failures, do what? Forget them. Come on. Text that in the comments. Forget them. To forget is to forgive. And, and after all, God already has forgiven us. But by the way, notice how Paul puts it. Not that I have already obtained or have already been made perfect. Now, how many of you uh, have... Uh, live with a perfectionist. <laughs> you know, you, sometimes, you know, you got people in your family, they perfectionists. You work around people who are perfectionists. And please note that this is the way that a perfectionist says, I've messed up. 
So Paul is not only uh, urging us to forget and to forgive our past sins and failures, but watch this, but also to forget and forgive the sins committed against us. Right? It, that is a hard thing to do is to forgive the sins and forgive uh, 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 the things that people have sins that people have committed against us. That is not an easy thing. You know, my saying is this, is that, you know, uh, you have to love like you've never been hurt. Now, I know that's a little tough for many of us, but this is the truth. You have to love like you've never been hurt because hurt will take you down further than you are right now. So you have to release it, right? It has to be a release, my Lord. So uh, we are uh, pros at compiling a record of wrong done, wrongdoings uh, to us. Many of us, we, we really, we hold that thing and we hold that thing. We already got a list of things that people have done and we got a list that, hey, it is so long and, and we hold fast to that. But uh, we carefully file every sin committed against us just in case we need the information at a later date. Do you think that's right? No. And you know, uh, the exchange that begins, remember when. So, you know, we have the files carefully stored. So the files on our spouse, the files on our children, the, fi the files on our parents, the files on our friends, even a pastor. Why? It could be that we are looking for an excuse not to be involved in ministry. So, you know, I could never serve alongside whoever you may say so-and-so because he or she gets on my nerve. I can never forgive them what they have done to me. No, it's time for you to reset for a new direction. Don't let those people live rent-free in your mind. Don't let those people steal your blessing by their appearance. Don't do that. Because God has more for you. He has greater for you. He has greater for me. He has greater for people that you don't even know of. But don't let them ruin what God has already begun in your life. So to really forget and to forgive the others uh, in, in my life so that I can get on with God's program mean that I must destroy the records. I need you to uh, text that in the comments. I must destroy the records. Destroy them in such a way that they can never be used against you. Don't hold on to the records. Destroy the records. Burn them. Do whatever you got to do. Get rid of them. And that is what the Lord does when he forgave and, for, and, and, and forgives and forgets our sins. It is the only way to get rid of anger and get rid of resentment, get rid of bitterness that accumulates with years of unforgiveness. Just like the word forgiveness is a powerful word. Unforgiveness is a powerful word in the opposite. Un unforgiveness is a powerful word in the negative. But forgiveness is a powerful word in the positive. It works for you, not against you. And so the text tells us that the idea of forgetting the past and uh, forgetting and forgiving others and, and others is the only, only half of the process of getting on with God's program in our lives. When we look at Romans 8 and 29, I'll read it for you. It says, for whom he did foreknow. He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. Isn't that awesome? That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Did you get that? Did you catch that? God wants to make you and me like Jesus. Wow. He is fashioning your life to build the character of Christ in you so that everything that he allows to come into your life is part of the tooling to make you like Jesus. So that means that he has placed you as a Jesus in your home, in your workplace, as a parent to your kids, a partner to your spouse. So you want a purpose to your life. I want a purpose to my life. This is it. 
There is no higher calling. There is no greater goal than to be like Christ. That's the calling. That's the highest call is to be like Jesus. And so, <laughs> listen, my time is almost out, but I'm going to tell you a little story. I'm going to end with this. Uh, there was a farmer who had a mule who uh, fell into a deep well. And uh, he went and called all of his neighbors and everybody that they said, well, listen, there's no way we're going to be able to get this heavy mule out of this well. So I tell you what we're going to do. Y'all bring y'all shovels and everything like that. And we're just going to go ahead and just cover him up with dirt and uh, we'll be done with it. They went and got big dump trucks because the well was so big and they start dumping the dirt in. And they, do you know, as they dumped the dirt in and as they shoveled the dirt in, what the mule began to do is shake himself and he would step pack that dirt down. Every time they threw dirt in there, he would shake himself and he would pack the dirt down. Listen, that's what we are to do. And eventually what happened with the, with the mule is the mule, for, he kept shaking himself and packing the dirt down until eventually he got up out of the well. So when you think that things are at its worst and that, my God, I don't know how God is going to get me out of this. You got to reset for a new direction so that God will give you a creative idea on how to come up out of that hole, how to come up out of that well. And so you are watching me right now. There are some things that have tried to keep you in that hole, but all you got to do is shake it off and pack it down. I know people have been talking about you, but you got to shake that off and pack it down. I know they've been really cueing you, but you got to shake it off and pack it down. I know that they've been talking about you, your your family and everybody else, you got to shake it off and pack it down. Maybe your boss don't like you. You got to shake that off and pack it down because eventually you're going to come up out of that thing. Eventually, God going to give you a new creative idea so that you can come up out of the situation where you are and you will not stay there any longer. So what am I telling you? As I close, you're, you're focusing on, on, on past sins and failures will bury you. You cannot focus on that. You've got to come up with an idea that you can shake that thing off and pack it down. Because if you continue to focus on your past sins and your failures, it will bury you unless you learn to shake it off and step up. Paul's way of saying shake it off and step up is to forget what is behind you and press toward the mark of the high calling. The past can easily bury us or God can bless us if we simply simply use the past as a springboard to press on. I don't know about you this morning, but I'm going to use the past and my past failure, my past sins as a springboard so that I can press forward. God has given you a new direction. Don't you die in your past failures. It's time for you to bury that stuff. Don't let it bury you and move toward your new direction. God bless you today. The choice is yours this morning. So I want to pray with you because we are going to move in a new direction. Would you bow with me? Father, I thank you today that we're going to shake this thing off and we're going to step up. I thank you right now. We're going to forget those past sins and failures. And we are going to press on and see what you have in store for us. There are blessings as we come up out of this well. There are blessings as we come up out of this hole. There are blessings as we come up out of this depression or regression or recession or whatever it may be. We know that we can come up out of this. So let us do like Paul said, putting our past behind us and pressing toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. God bless you. I pray that you have gotten something out of this lesson today. And I really want to see you on next week. I really want you to know that, hey, we are going to learn how to reset for new direction. So as I go this direction, you go your direction, we're going to meet back here and talk about redirection. All right. God bless you. I'll see you on next time.